Hi, the following video will show you how to use the temperature controller on the iX81. So we have temperature controller instructions here. There will always be somewhere around uh, in this room. And so to set up the temperature controller first, you need to uh, have completed the normal microscope startup. So only once you've turned everything else on, which I've already done uh, for fluorescence, as you can see here, metamorph is open, um, everything is on. Only then do you start turning things on for temperature control. And so there are a number of steps that we have to execute and they're all here. We're gonna go in order. Um, the first is if you are using an objective heater, wrap it around the objective and plug it in. So I will have a separate video that will discuss how to use an objective heater. Uh, what this means is this system can allow you to heat the actual objective. And if you're using an oil objective, this may lead to better control of the temperature at the sample. But I'll, I'll address that in a different video since that is not such a typical situation. So the second step is to put the Takai hit incubator on the stage, avoid uh, tangling the cables. So the stage is this part of the microscope. Um, whenever we're putting things on and off the stage, we always want to lower any objective that's in place. And ideally, um, it's not a bad idea to go to a 4X objective just to make sure that whatever is in place is a little bit shorter. So I'm going to go to the 4X. I'm going to lower it by pressing the escape key. And then I'm going to remove the standard slide holder. And now I need to put on the Takai Hit Incubator. The Takai Hit Incubator is here. You can see it has a lid. It has this apparatus, which will fit on the stage, and it has this sort of well where we're going to put the water. And uh, it usually comes with this free holder in this position. So what we're going to do is put this whole thing on the microscope. Now be aware that in addition to the lid uh, being removable, uh, you can also uncouple the top from the bottom. Uh, so just be aware of that as you move it. You, you don't have to uncouple the top from the bottom, but that's just the way it's designed. And so be careful when you do that, uh, that you don't grab the top and the whole thing falls apart. Uh, there, these are also, each of these has a number of cables uh, and things connected to it. Uh, so when you move it to the, to the stage, just be careful that you don't tangle all these things. And if you notice that they're tangled, untangle them uh, once you get to the stage. So let me grab this. Okay. And I'm going to move it over to the stage. You can see there's a lot. There's one cable that seems to have been left behind there, a blue one. We'll deal with that in a second. And so I'm going to lay it here. You can see the bottom fits in that groove, and then just slide it from left to right. Um, so now if I remove this lid, you can place it here, side of the microscope, and we have a little bit of room to work with. So you can see that there are many, many uh, kind of cables and things uh, connected here. Some of them allow you, uh, allow the CO2 to go in, others control the temperature. We have this here. Uh, we have all the cables kind of on this holder. And the idea is that by placing them on that hook, uh, it relieves the tension on the microscope. Okay, so you wanna make sure that those are positioned correctly. The other thing you want to do is make sure that things aren't tangled. So for example, this cable seems to be pulling on it. So I'm going to remove it from back here. I'll just place this here. And then make sure that nothing seems to be uh, too tense because that can uh, kind of throw the microscope off. We are later going to put on this once we've placed on the water. This will keep um, evaporation and condensation on the lid to a minimum. But for now, we're ready. So obviously we can't put on a sample in the current configuration. We need some sort of adapter. And so that's the second, the, the next step, step three, is to put on the desired sample holder insert. And so you can see here, uh, typically next to the, uh, on this sort of blue piece of paper, we have these. And so this is sort of a kind of a nesting Russian doll type design where um, we have this holder, which will be inserted here. This is the most basic and biggest holder. And this is if you're going to do multi-well plates. 
Now, if you want something smaller than a multi-well plate, you have a number of adapters here, which you can nest in one after another to get down to something like a 35 millimeter dish. If that's what you want, then you're gonna put this in there. The other option that people typically use is a chambered cover glass slide. Um, and so for those, you need a different adapter, uh, not this one. So you need something different to go in there. And let me show you where those are. Those additional adapters are down here in this box. The first level contains the lid, which you would have to use in a subsequent step. And I'll show you that later. And if you lift this, you have the adapter that can go on the stage. And then this, which is something that you can put on the side as a sort of second adapter. Uh, so if you need to use chambered cover glass, uh, let me know and I'll show you exactly how they fit. But it's going to be very similar to the 35 millimeter dish, which is what I have for the example during this video. Once we've put on the desired sample holder inset, which is step three, we need to put on our sample. And one thing I would add here is that if you're using an oil objective, uh, you need to put it in, um, or rather have put it in before you put in this, and then uh, switch to it and oil it before you put on your sample. Uh, so that's not the case for this example. I'm just gonna use the 20X objective. Uh, and I am going to grab my sample. This is just a 35 millimeter dish. and put it there. So um, the next step is to put on a magnetic lid for your sample. The problem if you leave it like this is that the sample will be very loose. So that's why we have to put on a magnetic lid. Let me show you what that looks like. The magnetic lid is this contraption here. It consists of two parts, this sort of lid and this bottom part, which has magnets, actually both have magnets, uh, so they sort of snap together. And there's a port in which you can put uh, kind of perfusion solutions or uh, the temperature sensor. I will show you how to use the temperature sensor in a later video. And if you ever wanna do perfusion, please talk to me beforehand. You can see that the, that the lid here, this has a piece of glass on it with two little pieces of putty holding it. Uh, it used to have an O-ring, but that had the annoying tendency of falling out. So I've come up with a solution to hold that piece of glass in there. If for some reason that piece of glass cracks, just let me know and uh, we can replace it. We have a few spares. In any case, this whole thing needs to go on the sample. So we're going to take it over here and we need to replace the current lid of the sample with this one, which you can see these, um, it has these sort of two magnetic pillars that um, align with these two spots there. And when you put them in, just the whole thing kind of snaps into place and holds the dish. Okay. So step six is a recommended step is to secure your sample with blue tech. So even though this does a good job of securing your sample, it's not perfect. Uh, so particularly if you're going to do multi-position imaging over a few hours um, or, or something that, that takes a while where the sample can move in, you're using an oil objective uh, which will sort of create drag on the sample. You really want to secure it as best as possible. And uh, this by itself is not going to cut it. So in addition to this, what we suggest is to use blue tack, which is sort of this putty, uh, break it into maybe three pieces and put some putty on the edges of the, uh, uh, of the sample. So I am going to do that and then show you the results so you can see what that looks like. So I had to use both hands to create these sort of three smaller pieces of putty that you can see here. And the idea when you put them on is to kind of place them in three different positions around the sample. So maybe a little bit over here, put the other one maybe there, and then the final one on the other side, and that'll just give it a little bit uh, more um, firmness when you're moving around 
uh, particularly if you have an oil objective. So it just takes a moment, but it'll just make it that much more likely that things won't move around. So the next step is to, if you want to measure or control the temperature in your sample directly, put on the temperature sensor, making sure the sensing wire is in your media. I'll have a separate video showing how to do that. Uh, in most cases, that's not necessary. This is only necessary if it's very important for you to either measure directly the temperature in the sample or ensure that the actual temperature within your sample is 37. So the, the system is very good at holding uh, a constant temperature, but you, you're not 100% sure it's actually 37 in the sample unless you measure it. And so if that is very important to you, the exact temperature, you should measure it and you can use a temperature sensor that we have. Um, and if you uh, want to use that um, to sort of generate feedback and make sure that it stays at that temperature, you need to use that sensor. As I said, it will have a different video where I go over that in a little bit more detail. The next step is to turn the knob on the CO2 tank to open. So here's the CO2 tank. We're gonna use this and turn it counterclockwise. When we do, just make sure that you're at 15 PSI and that this is not very close to the bottom. If it is, let us know and we'll um, go ahead and change that tank. The next step, step nine, is to turn on the Takai Hit controller, which we do with this button. Takes a moment to start up. So the next step, Step number 10 is if you want to adjust the temperature based on measurements inside the sample, turn on feedback. So this is the feedback. We are not doing that right now. There's another video uh, explaining how to do that. So we're gonna skip that. 11 is if you are not measuring the temperature in the sample, make sure the feedback is off. So that should be off. Uh, this is very important because if you leave that on, but you, are not, uh, you do not have the temperature sensor in the sample, it's going to measure the ambient temperature and think that it needs to constantly heat it up and it's going to uh, overheat your sample and uh, destroy it. So if you are not measuring the temperature in the sample, you have to decide on what the proper settings are. And this depends on whether you have a 35 millimeter dish or chambered cover glass, in which case you use uh, the dish settings. Uh, if you have a multi-well plate, you use the well setting. So where are these settings and how do you adjust them? They're down here. So let me see if I can get closer. You can see that it says top, bath, and stage. Those are different parts of the Takai hit that need to be set to these temperatures if you're using dish and these temperatures if you're using well. So you can see that the top heater when you're using a dish should be set to 50.6. The bath heater should be set to 41. And the stage heater should be set to 38. A general note about nomenclature PV is the current temperature, SV is the set temperature. Uh, so I guess SV probably means set value, PV, I don't know what the P stands for, but it's the current value. If you wanted to change it, you could just click on it by, this is a touch screen, put in whatever value you wanted there and hit enter. So for example, if you wanted a well plate, we would put in 51.1 and hit enter. Since I have a dish, I'm gonna leave it at 50.6. The next step, step 13, is to very carefully fill the moat with 10 milliliters of distilled H2O using preheated water from the incubator. Uh, so this helps using preheated water, helps uh, make the process faster. So I'm gonna go uh, get that, it's inside our incubator, and then I'm gonna use this syringe, uh, which is next to the Takai hit, and load up 10 milliliters of water, which I'm going to place in this moat, very carefully. This is the water that I've gathered from the incubator. Uh, it's in, always in this container. So I'm just going to grab 10 mils and place it in the Takai head. more than 10 mils but that's okay and so now we need to be very careful because we have water and we have a microscope but we don't want the water to go in the wrong place in the microscope so we're going to very gently just fill this moat 
with liquid. Taking care not to spill water on the microscope itself. If you do spill water, just use a Kim wipe to wipe it off immediately. So you can see this doesn't form a perfect kind of seal of water all over the place, but that's fine. This is enough water for what we need. Uh, now, uh, another thing we need to do is put on this special plastic lid for the water, which only goes in one way. You can see it has kind of a weird shape which matches the shape of the moat. And the idea is this putting this in helps uh, keep the lid from fogging. So that's why we do that. The final step is to put the lid on the Takai hit insert. Now, you typically want to do this uh, and leave it to stabilize uh, for at least maybe 15 minutes or 30 minutes to kind of let it sit there uh, and be very stable if you're going to do some sort of experiment where you need it to stay stable for a while. Also keep in mind that this microscope has a hardware-based autofocus, so you can also use that to your advantage to keep things stable. And if you have any questions uh, of, for how to address the stability, let me know and we can discuss them.